our Nimble community today to inspire and educate them about something so critically important, their personal brand, their company brand, and their ability to tell stories. And so when I first met you, and we met because we had common passion and brand building and storytelling, and you were doing work with Microsoft, and we've been doing a lot of work with Microsoft lately with the Office 365 team, and you helped them tell stories at scale as well as their resellers, I said to myself, I need to help Peter tell our Nimble community the story about how to use video to tell stories, because if a picture tells a thousand words, then a video tells a million words and all you got to do is look around at these mobile devices that can shoot these incredible videos so easily and with Facebook Live you can reach billions of people and it's such a powerful tool that I said to myself I need to bring Peter Matchek to the Nimble community to do a webinar on how to be better, smarter, faster with storytelling and video and so I just want to introduce Peter to our audience uh, CEO of in-house video, expert in video storytelling, and Peter, what are you going to teach us today? Well, first of all, John, thank you so much for such a warm introduction. I must say, uh, it's uh, uh, I'm excited to be here. I actually yeah. know of you before even I had a chance to meet you, and I'm like, when I saw you speak, and I saw your energy, and then I saw your passion, I'm like, okay, this guy's awesome. Uh, so thanks so much. Uh, it's been an, uh, an honor to be here. And, uh, with your team, uh, so I'm fantastic to share all the best stuff I've known for the last kind of decade of my life. And really, you know, to what we're going to share today is I'm going to break down the barriers that video does not have to be hard. All right, yeah. so we're going to touch a little bit on about why video is so powerful, but we're really we're going to get down to how to take this, and you absolutely nailed it. This little device, by the way, for you who have kids, they just has any kid asked you, hey, how, Dad, how do I use one of these? No, they just go shoot content. So we're going to walk through that thing uh, right now. And I love, I have the questions on here. Um, yeah, thank you. Somebody likes my eyeglasses. Excellent. Thanks so much. I need those to see. But keep those questions coming, please. If you have any interactions, I'll try to get to as many of uh, as I uh, as I can. If not, please put them in there because I will personally email you and answer the question. Also, at the end of the session, we put a link in there. I put like nine of our best resources, scripting templates, what you need for gear, everything, all the content for you to, to be successful. So don't worry, you don't have to remember everything. Uh, just enjoy the show and be interactive. So John, thanks so much, and let's get started. Let's go. Um, fantastic, so let me just... Screen. Voila. Voila, perfect. Now, can you see that okay? You bet. Excellent, so how to, sh how to shoot great business videos with smartphone, I just found this online and I thought it was a perfect kind of picture starting point. So let's look at some of these little challenges just really quickly. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but here is why video is so important, okay? The online environment has exploded. That's why we use fantastic tools like Nimble to, to help us through it, but it's, it's getting extremely competitive. There's a lot of noise. Um, and when we're looking at making decisions, we all know we don't phone anymore, right? We don't, the, when we phone a vendor or phone anybody, we're pretty much our minds are made up, so we do all of the decision making online. Biggest struggle, some of you have said this too, is bandwidth, internal bandwidth, being able to on the marketing side, let alone video, so how do we keep up? And so there, these are some of the challenges that almost anybody in business today um, faces. So why is video such a kind of key important, and as we call it in-house here, the unfair advantage? Well, simply, most of us love video from a, you know, a perspective of, hey, you gotta figure something out, you go to YouTube, uh, the, the, the generation that's coming behind it, well, they just all know video. But from a statistical point of view, here's the kind of the four stats that are the best ones that we found from just increasing, uh, in, in especially email click-throughs, uh, John was talking about Facebook, you know, even Snapchat. I mean, look at anywhere that you go, video is the dominant form. So you can look at it going, hey, video, check mark, yes, you need it, so now let's go pop into it. Uh, how are we going to use it and why? And so one of the biggest things for business owners, doesn't matter if you're small or super large, I said, look, if you go to a website, most of our websites look the same, right? We all got blogs, we all got some case studies, some white papers, and it's all text. But the core of who we are is the people inside the organization that ultimately the customers and prospects trust us and build trust. 
Well, you can't get that across in text, right? There's pictures in there. And John, you mentioned, you know, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, actually, video, for a minute of video, is about 1.6 million words. That's actually the direct translation. So you can show a big differentiator. You can show different parts of uh, your IP, your people, but ultimately it builds trust because it's human uh, connection. So who loves being on video? And I should have done a poll on this one. Who loves being on video? Here's a quote. I love it when I have to speak into the camera with bright lights shining in my face and microphones are hovering all around me and memorizing a script. Said no one ever, okay? And this is the challenge with video because people are used to this, right? And if anybody's ever done video, it's been hard. And sometimes, I do have one of my little fancy cameras here, but if you guys can see this, like even this is a DSLR, but you get the bigger cameras that people put in your face and we're not actors, right? We, we get scared when we see this stuff. So there has to be a better way. And the answer is yes. This is a little shoot we've uh, remote directed with a customer. And look, like John said, this is a business environment, and they're using a smartphone, right? So as soon as you have a smartphone, these these little things have so much capabilities, and we're so used to using those in our personal life, right? For for the parties or for vacations, but we rarely kind of transition to have and think about it in the business world. The answer is use them. They're extremely powerful. That's actually what all in-house does is we teach and help our customers around the globe use only these to produce high quality videos. So the production sort of piece of it is not a challenge anymore, all right? So when we're looking at demystifying um, the, the, the video production process is that smartphone now has not only been so powerful, uh, so capable, but people are less scared of it. So it actually reduces all the fear and anxiety. And when you're looking at it, a lot of people go, well, we have to have a professional, you know, looking things for our company. No, you don't people. Look at YouTube, right? Look at the kids that are just pumping out content. That's quality content that engages, right? It doesn't sell, it gives value. But the production quality right now doesn't have to be a $30,000 production. Yes, granted it has to be good, in terms of light and sound, we're going to talk about that. And now I'm going to show you how you can actually get an $80 mic that you plug into a smartphone, and ta-da! You have yourself a fantastic video production studio. So we covered this in terms of the smartphone. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't have to be an iPhone, but anything new in the last couple of year, year and a half, even iPads shoot phenomenal videos. So you already have all the video production capabilities in your pocket. So how do you use a tripod? So how do you use a tripod? How do you use a smartphone? There are basically three or four things that you need when we're talking about using for video uh, production. So one, we have a tripod, which is kind of standard basic. There's a little clip in there. And again, you don't have to memorize this. In the downloads, we have a full little PDF that shows exactly the picture of it and where to buy it on Amazon. This entire getup of a microphone a tripod and a little bracket is like a $230 investment. And ladies and gentlemen, you are set. And the reason we use a tripod for this one is so we don't get that shaky little hands and it keeps a stable environment, which obviously increases the production uh, quality. So when we're talking about it, this is a perfect example of using for a video production in your office. So most of the stuff that we do are encourage business people to do is to talk to the camera, all right? So it's a little bit of a talking head, but you're delivering the message towards them. And this is the perfect area for using smartphones like this when you have the tripod, the bracket, and the microphone plugged in. This allows you to have a stable shot, allows you to have um, a way that you can capture a two, two and a half minute piece of video content. We're gonna talk about the scripting in a concise manner and to get through uh, the noise uh, of what you're trying to do. So a lot of people start going, okay, Peter, great, got my iPhone, got my tripod, got my microphone, I got a good place to uh, uh, pick a place to shoot. How do we get started? What do we talk about? All right, so and I, I'm going to just quickly go through it, and then I'm going to pop out of this because, John, I'd love to get your input on it from a social perspective. You know, what are your beliefs? 
uh, from your audience that they should talk about to give them some ideas. But here is the gist of what I tell every single customer and every single person I've talked to in the last decade. I said, when prospects or customers first meet you, they ask you a handful of questions. And those questions we get all the time. I said, well, if you are struggling what to talk about in video format, make sure those top 10, 15, 20 questions or pieces of valuable content are on your website or on the social presence out there in video format that people can easily access them and consume them. Okay, that's the first place to start. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna give you a ton of content to start with, just answering the basic questions. And for us, for example, right now is like, where do I start with video, right? How do I script? What gear do I need? How long does it take? And these are basic fundamental questions that they don't really sell your products, but they just give great value and they answer the questions that people want. And we all know this from our own behavior. When you go to YouTube, you're looking for a solution or something, you're looking for an answer, you hit a video, within 10 seconds, you guys make a decision whether it's giving value or not, right? So if it's giving you value, you're gonna stick around. And if it's not, you're bailing. So give people a value and answer people's questions. So with that, I would love to just, I'm gonna pause the stuff right now. And John, are you there? I am. I've just been fascinated listening to you and watching you. You know, it's one thing to hear somebody talk, but when I see you moving around and, and, and you're right now displaying how easy it is to get in front of a camera and storytell. And so I, what I want everybody who's listening and watching this today is to see how Peter is simply just standing in front of a camera and he's animating, he's talking and he's sharing and you may not remember everything he says, but you're going to remember how he said it and the feeling that you got. But what you're talking about in this particular slide is so critical to today's customer journey and your ability to participate in that journey and become their trusted advisor. The biggest problem with most marketing is you're talking about your products and new services. Stop talking about your products and services. Nobody cares. Exactly. People care about themselves. They care about how they can become better, smarter, faster. And if you just focus on all your content, all your marketing is focused on, on inspiring and educating other people about how they can become better, smarter, faster, you will earn their intimacy and trust. You will become their trusted advisor. And when they're making a buying decision, they'll pick up the phone and they'll call you and they'll drag their friends with them. And so for me, when I build content, whether it's audio or video or text, I'm all about teaching people to fish. So if you teach people to fish, they'll figure out you sell the fishing poles. And that for me is what this slide is all about. Fantastic. And you know what, you're 100% correct. And I think what a lot of people struggle with when they get on video, they, they don't know who they're talking with. Right? They don't know who they're talking to, so they don't have an audience in their mind. Mm -hmm. And so this, this next little thing we're going to talk about here, and I'm going to go right back into um, the slide here. And this one, so let's pop to the next one here. Let's script. So here is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a great little story with you, uh, everyone here. So I personally shot about 5,000 videos myself. I've directed about 1,000 to 2,000 non-actors, i.e. regular people, regular humans in business environments. And I've tried everything. I've tried the teleprompters. I've tried you know, notes over here. I've tried memorizing, cu cutting it. You know what works? This little sticky note with three bullet points to to remind your little brain what you need to talk about and you stick it right underneath the camera lens. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your million dollar scripting technique. But here's how this kind of structure works with, to help you align yourself with what you're gonna talk about and make sure you connect with the audience. First of all, you pick a topic that you can cover around two minutes. Now, I could spend an entire webinar telling you why two minutes, but here's the the, the, the short and the, the skinny. One, anything past two minutes, we just don't care. <laughs> that's, that's just really what it is. Secondly, a natural human conversation, if somebody asks you a question, 
you naturally talk for two minutes. So you're naturally going to explain it until you kind of look at them and look for a nod or a puzzle scratch in the head, and that's how the conversation kind of continues. So for you, for anybody, it's easy to talk about something for two minutes. Uh, five minutes, it's hard. Try it. It's really kind of hard. Even I, I struggle to do a video for three to five minutes talking without a break, but two minutes um, is, is, is the key. The second part is you want to write down who are you talking to. And please don't talk, hey, I'm talking to the CEO, I'm talking to the IT manager, I'm talking to the HR person, and I'm talking to the custodian. Four different people. You cannot have a message or a shotgun approach. You need to pick one person, just like you were in a real conversation, which is going to narrow your focus. right? So if you're talking to, uh, let's say, somebody in the finance department, right? You automatically visualize and you know, hey, I'm talking to that finance person. Okay, numbers are important, obviously, right? Uh, we have security. We have to have some backup, some data in there. And automatically, your ability to create that content is much easier. Instead of going, I'm talking to the internet, everybody's there, right? Like, that is why people kind of struggle when they're creating digital content. By the way, we have a one-page scripting sheet that's also in the resource section. So again, you don't have to worry about it. It's a one-page. Uh, it's a it's a Word document and actually tells you exactly what to fill out. Then when you identify who you're talking to, you write down their fears and wants. Again, two or three bullet points. And why is that important? Put it this way, when I'm talking to most people about video production, I have to know that they're scared. I have to know that they're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. right? If I don't know the fears, I can't really relate to them. And we know this when we're talking face to face because if somebody is kind of scared, they're kind of like squirmy and they're like checking their phones, I gotta leave, and your mind automatically is getting those signals. And so when you're creating videos, you don't have those signals, which means why it's so important to create those pieces of information before you start kind of recording or shooting any kind of video. And then the last one is literally the three or four bullet points you're gonna tell the person that you're making this video for inside and you're going to tell them, hey, these are the three bullet points that are going to answer the questions or are going to relate to the topic you're talking about, but are going to address their wants and are going to address their fears. And so with this little tiny exercise of five little steps, it's extremely easy to come up with these. And most people, most of our customers that do this, they can script a two to two and a half minute video in 15 minutes. Because ladies and gentlemen, all the content is stuck in your head. This is just a funnel of to get it out there and make sure it has value to the people that you're sharing the content with. Um, again, this is a little bit of an exercise that I encourage you to go through. Use the sticky notes, put it right underneath the camera of the smartphone. So you don't want to put it here so you're not going like this. Hi, my name is Peter and I'm going to talk to you about uh, video production today, <laughs> right? If you put it right underneath the camera, your eyes move a little bit um, and it's easy to, for you to have that kind of prompter kind of style and so you know what to focus on. And guess what? Peter, can I yes. prompt you for a question? Because I'm, I'm monitoring the questions in the background while you are doing an amazing job. Beautiful. The question that keeps coming up is microphones. And so oh, if you have a recommendation on microphones, I shared a link for a page of mics at Guitar Center because you know, a mic could be different things to different people. It could be a mic that you put on the phone that you're trying to record like a concert or something. It could be some type of mic that is a wired mic that is a lapel pin that you're going to use to record somebody. It could be a wireless mic that you would be using. So it depends on the use case. And so maybe you could just cover that real quick because it seems to be something that's that's important for a lot of people. Everybody's getting to. Well, you know what? That's a great segue because I'm going to pop into this get ready to shoot and we're going to cover right now we're going to cover uh, the um, uh, the microphones as well okay yeah. so bear with me two seconds so get ready to shoot one of the biggest things I'm going to tell you is 90 percent good enough the last 10 percent will kill you and I want you to repeat that 90 percent good enough the last 10 percent is going to kill you you're going to be nervous you're going to make a mistake guess what it's okay it's 100 percent human and if you try to make it perfect guess what people see right through that okay so the first one is the hardest, second one is always easier. This is a very common one, I co always cover this. Please, when you shoot videos, don't be a vertical offender. Everything's made 16 by nine, okay? That's the thing you wanna do. 
when you frame the subject, this is called framing. If you put a person in there, you kind of don't want them in the middle. It's a little bit off to the side. Um, it's just something that the film industry has in it. I kind of tend to agree with them, but it's a little bit of a framing. If you start getting to it, just put somebody off the side. It actually composes the shot a little bit better. And it's really, that's all you need to know. So when we're talking about lighting, there's a couple things, lighting and sound, we're going to talk about here real quick. But lighting, um, have you ever tried to shoot inside into a window and you kind of blacked out? Always have lights coming in on the side that's well lit. Here I actually have a light that's looking at me right now. I have a couple, uh, couple lights coming in. And look out for strong shadows. Natural light by far, ladies and gentlemen, is the best thing in the world. Here's a very quick example. You have lots of light coming in from the one side and simple background works extremely well. Shooting outdoors. The best time to shoot outdoors is when it's cloudy. That's the best time to shoot or take photographs. And when you have a sun, it's a little bit hard to do uh, because of the strong shadows. But just remember, natural light, lots of good natural light, and these cameras work absolutely fantastic. Mics. There's one mic that we have. And you know what? Where is my mic? It's in the next room. <laughs> it's a lav mic. So a lav mic is basically a lapel that clips on. I'm actually wearing it in the shot right in here. You can kind of see it there on my shirt. This is called the lapel mic. This little road mic, sorry, I'm switching back and forth quickly here. Um, this little road smart lav is $80. It produces almost as good, if not better, results than the $800 professional wireless mics. And it works with almost every single smartphone that's about a year to two years old. It's by far the greatest things in there. And in that little document that we have in the, in the resource library, there's the microphone link, and then there's an extension cable. So you have about 10 to 15 feet. It's plugged in. I also recommend the ones that are plugged in uh, directly into it that have the wire, just because there's no interference. And you know what? They're literally about 400 bucks cheaper. <laughs> That's it. And they produce phenomenal quality. And again, they can plug into DSLRs if you have them. Again, this is a, a DSLR, a little fancier. This is called a little shotgun mic. It's an overkill. But this is just kind of without wire. But the little um, lapel mics that clip on um, that's on this link right here is a fantastic microphone that works for almost every uh, application. Does that kind of help with some of those questions there, John? Uh, in fact, what I'm doing is I just grabbed the link for uh, the Rode Smart Lab from Amazon, uh, and yes. I'm, I'm putting it up. Uh, I'm putting it up uh, in the uh, uh, chat window here. Fantastic. So you know what? How about I'm a per I'm almost basically. Um, uh, finish the sections here and I kind of flew through it on a purpose because I would love to right now go through the questions and have a little bit of an open discussion on the different kind of topics um, that we covered so let's uh, pop you back on there John if you want to turn on your webcam okay um, the only thing is I'm going to be looking down a little bit because I'm trying to go through That's the okay. uh, questions uh, here's a question about the angle of lighting um, and so the the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection. In other words, um, do you see how there's light in my yes. uh, my 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 lens right here, my my, yes. my glasses? So yeah. uh, when I sold gold mine, I actually went and got a degree in photography. And and one of the things that you learn is that if you angle it, by now I've got a big window in front of me, so I've got this reflection. But yeah. uh, that's one of the reasons why you have this side light coming in. One reason is it gives you more depth because it's not just all frontal lit. You have a sort of a shadow side and a lit side, and also you don't get as much reflection. Uh, yeah. So that's one of the reasons why you want uh, the angle. What do you think? Uh, that's, a, that's a great, great answer. And I think, I think most people about angles of light to where they come in should not actually even worry about this. Because I think as long as you're lit, as long as people can see your face, if you got some shadows or it's not perfect, don't worry about it. You know what makes actually a really good video? Anybody? Anybody? Real. Simple. Real. And content. Right? Yeah. It's the story. It's the story that matters, right? And I think a lot of people too, they'll go, well, uh, microphone this and angle on that. And then guess what? You're spending, you know, an hour trying to figure it out. And then by the time you get there, it's like, what am I supposed to talk about, right? Yeah. 
And I think somebody said that too here. I think Jennifer said that shooting is easy, editing can be intimidating, being on camera is the scariest. And so I want to touch on that a little bit about how to reduce your fear of being on camera. Um, there's two ways you can uh, go about it. The one, I have three children, 11, 8 to 5. Their fear level of being on camera is zero. And you know what that means is that this entire generation that's coming behind us, right, that's going to be our customers, that are going to be our, our employees, that are going to be our bosses maybe, who knows, don't even have that fear inside them, which means, just like Nike, get over it and just do it. Right? You have to get over it and just do this. And you know what? Back to that rule, 90% good enough. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to look down. It's okay to take a sip of water while I'm doing a webinar. It's all human. Right? There's nothing wrong with it um, around that. So, I mean, that's what, uh, the biggest one we always tell people is, that, you know, yeah, the first one is not going to be the best, but the second one is going to be easier. third one is going to be easier, so you just have to do it. And one of the things I want to add is when things are too polished, they, they feel fake, right? And so I, I used to do tests with marketing and direct mail pieces, and the ones that did the best were the ones in courier font with yellow highlighting, not the one in time Roman font that was all pretty and formatted. It's the simple things because it cuts through the clutter. Have you ever seen an envelope come into you where it feels like it was handwritten and there may be like, like a sticky thing on the, on the, on the outside or whatever? What that does, it cuts through the noise. And so you don't have to be perfect. You could actually walk out into your alley and get some fantastic light, a simple background. And some of the best photographs of my family that I've ever done have been in an alley because you get this reflected light off the building on the opposite side and then the, the, you're sitting in full shade and, and it's just fantastic. So don't worry about that. One of the other questions that uh, people are asking about is, is tripods, right? Yes. So the thing is, is that there's different tripods for different purposes. You could have a tripod that's standing on the ground, you could have a tripod that's standing on your desk, and you could have a tripod that's sitting in your hand that you're using for uh, view, and you might have a tripod that does all of that, right? So there are some selfie sticks that do that. Talk about tripods. Tripod. So the general rule of thumb is there's a tripod called Manfrotto, and you know what? I don't have in front of me, unfortunately, the uh, – uh, the model number. It's in the deck, or it's in the. Uh, I'll put it in the deck, and I'll make sure it's in that PDF. It's uh, about a hundred dollars. And one of the key things I always do is all. Most of these tripods are, are relatively sturdy. Uh, this one's called Manfrotto. Uh, it's a great brand that actually makes professional, uh, a professional like kind of grade tripods, and they went into the more consumer market. But here is what I look into a tripod. All of them are relatively. Uh, uh, you know, small, they can compact, but where they lack is the ability to go up to eye level. All right, so what you want to look into a tripod is make sure a tripod can extend long enough, you know, that 60 inches or plus in that environment that can actually get to when a person is standing to get to their eye level. There we go. Perfect. What's that one? So this is a Gitzo, uh, but the thing I like about it is it's uh, carbon fiber, so oh, it's uh, it's it's really light. And I use this. This is my video head, and yeah. I use this for shooting other people because you can easily pan and stuff. But you don't need anything like this if you're shooting yourself, especially with what you're doing, Peter. But if you're gonna get a tripod, you don't. You sometimes are gonna have to lug it, and so. Uh, carbon fiber is a really great thing and buy something that is built tough because in many cases the thing you're putting on top of the tripod is worth more than the tripod and so 100%. if you don't get a tripod that's steady and you knock it over you're going to ruin some really great equipment and so you know buy spend good money on good equipment uh, yeah because you're going to buy them once 100 percent and you know what so you, you made a good point too so you sometimes like I try to get one tripod that goes, you know, the my height. Sometimes you have a travel one, like the tiny ones, or sometimes what I do use one of these things called a gorilla pod. Mm -hmm. A little bit, a little excessive, but these can wrap around poles and and you can put them in cars or some kind of hold them. A little bit of excessive, but again, a good solution for it. But uh, uh, if you're buying your first tripod, I would recommend buying a tripod that at least you can put um, and can extend 
to a person's eye level full height, right? That's what you want to do because the camera level, what you want to do is like I'm here right now. It's kind of my eye line, and that is the best. So you're not like too up looking down, yeah. or you're like. And, and you're that's like another this. good point. Is that even though my 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 phone my my computer has a camera on it, I don't use the camera on my computer. I use a Logitech camera that plugs in that has a wider angle and has a chip on board for better processing yeah. and better color gamut. But most importantly, my notebook is lifted up on a stand so that I'm eye level with the camera. And if I was an eye level, I'd be looking down at the camera this way, and then your eyes are looking down. So what that point you just made is critical. We're getting some questions about distribution. And Perfect. so, so um, I'm going to answer one question real quick from Keith over here. He said, what type of head do you use for holding a smartphone? And they make these really great heads that just clamp them. And so that's essentially the one that I find the best. What do you, what do you find the best, Peter? In terms of like clamping it to the yes. um, uh, – to, 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 Yeah, to the back. So, again, it's in that little PDF that we have, but it's a clip that is actually on a spring. Yeah, and the spring cling it's about twenty seven dollars, and it allows to adjust anywhere from regular iPhones or regular phones to all the way. This is a six plus, so it's much bigger. And again, too, like you mentioned, this is a clip. This thirty bucks, but it's super sturdy. It's yeah. got a big spring on it, and like you want, I always look for a clip. If it's a little wonky with a little tiny screws, I'm like, it ain't holding my $700 iPhone, <laughs> right? I want something to stick onto that sucker and make sure it doesn't move. But those clips are the uh, by far the best ones. So in regards to distribution, the thing that I'm excited about is the volume of platforms that you can utilize today to distribute your videos. Yesterday, I was watching the Cubs beat the Indians. Sorry to the Indian fans out there. Um, and I was so excited about the game that I actually went and videoed uh, the intro, which was really well done, and I shared that on my Instagram feed, which then feeds to my Twitter feed, as well as my Facebook feed, and simultaneously my YouTube feed, and I was able to share this video that it wasn't a business video that was talking about Nimble or myself or sales or marketing. It was talking about my one of my passion plans and purpose in life. And so when you thought, think about sharing content, just don't share content in and around the areas of products and services that you sell, but share content around your passions. Maybe it's a mountain biking video. Maybe it's a, uh, a video of the stars in the, in, the, in the mountains going by. Whatever it is, what that does is it connects to people, it connects you to other people in a human way. But as far as distribution, I used one source to then shoot to multiple sources and um, and so what's your thought on distribution, Peter? Where do you put your videos and how do you put them there? Yeah, so so great, great questions. And before I answer that, I'm just going to add a little point because you made a fantastic point over there about sharing real stories. And I think, you know, the business world um, in the past was all this corporate messaging stuff. But then you actually met the person in real life, and guess what? You got to know them, right? Like, hey, how many kids you got? What are you doing? You know, what's your passion? And that now needs to be part of that digital presence, right? And when, John, you mentioned, you know, share your passion, share your beliefs, what you're doing, is because at the human core level, like you mentioned, it builds trust. And I think that's so, so, so important. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to share those stories or share those things. Uh, about you, obviously within your own comfort, right? You don't have to go crazy on it, but with something in your comfort, but share those. Now, so where do you distribute videos? Um, it's a really easy uh, question to answer, and the answer is everywhere. Ah! <laughs> right? It's anywhere you can put a video, ladies and gentlemen, um, you do it. Um, most common people go, well, hey, where do we put it on our website? Put it on your website. How do we host it? Put it on YouTube. Step number one. YouTube is massive. It's a massive, obviously, search engine. It is going to be the next search engine. Video will be the search engine. This is why Google bought them uh, years ago. Um, second one, I would obviously put it on Facebook. Why? Because Facebook video is exploding, and Facebook and Google are going at it, and they're fighting over, guess what? Videos, right? Let's, let's stop at Facebook for a second, because this is an amazingly powerful um, platform to utilize 
Facebook Live, when you go Facebook Live, it will automatically ping other people that you just went live. And for those of you who aren't using Facebook for business, you're missing out on an amazing opportunity. People think that you know LinkedIn is to you know get a job and Twitter is uh, for propeller heads and Facebook's to hook up with your high school sweetheart, but it's nothing from the truth. The reality is that business has also always been social. People buy from people they like, know, and trust. And Facebook is a place where you would have simple conversations around your passion, plan, and purpose in life, which may include some of your business uh, attributes. But I stay connected with other business thought leaders on Facebook on a daily basis, and I can get a hold of them much quicker on Facebook Messenger than I can on email. But Facebook Live, you could essentially do a Facebook Live thing from anywhere you're at. You might be at an event, you might be walking in the mountains, whatever you're doing, you could talk about things and share them so quickly and effectively, and they go right in your stream, in your contact, in your connection stream. And in this instance, Peter, I'm actually say that this vertical works in Facebook Live as well as in Instagram. True. Because that's the way in Instagram, if you're looking at stories, Instagram stories, which is becoming a really powerful B2B platform, it's yeah. in those cases, it's vertical. So depending on the place you're posting it, you're either going to be like this or this, or you end up with a square of it, in which case you just need to frame it right so that when you crop it, it's going to yeah. fit in the square formats like, like uh, Instagram. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, you're absolutely correct. Like there's, there's, you know, and I think sometimes too, this is where video is a little bit overwhelming because, you know, you got, you know, guys like myself is like, put it everywhere. You know, John, share all your personal stories, get it out there. And then you're like, wow, where do I start? Um, you know, I think definitely, you know, you need to put it all channels, but start with the channels that you already have, right? Start just replacing, you're going to have text, you know, start replacing or putting it up there um, in, in the video format. And Really, at the end of the day, the, the, a lot of people ask the question is how long these videos should be. And I think it's something that um, I'm going to touch on right now real quick is to, to give you a really good indication. Obviously, when you're doing live streaming or uh, live services, it's a little bit different. That kind of keeps going uh, until people get bored or switch off. But when you're recording videos, here's the, the, the two kind of standard rules. If it's anything to do with kind of sales or marketing or where people really that that you don't know them that well, it's a little more kind of salesy. You're trying to get a little value in there. Anything under three minutes works, okay? If you do it over three minutes, statistically people just drop off. And and really the the most important part of any video is actually the first eight seconds. Um, it's right now the <laughs> the attention span of the human being, which is the same as a goldfish. Uh, we all know this, right? How many times we actually are sitting there and you're like, oh, yep. oh lost you. What? Ah, coming back. All right, ADD. I'm Captain ADHD here. Um, so you have the first eight seconds to really get in there. That's why you want to hit them with value right away and you want to actually build their trust, earn it, and you want to go to a maximum above three minutes. If you're doing training content, and training content is like, hey, we're going to have, you know, whiteboard, uh, whiteboard videos uh, Fridays. SEO Moz does this extremely well. Uh, there's a couple companies that do it. For training purposes, you go out there and say, this is a training kind of component. you got about five to eight minutes of engagement time. I would keep it in that range. So sales and marketing, keep it anything under three minutes. If it's a little bit of a training, five to eight minutes. People often say, well, Peter, we have a great webinar that we want to put on YouTube. Right, we take this great, fantastic webinar recording, and it's 60 minutes, and then you put it on YouTube. I said, "Great. Will anybody sit through a webinar, fully recorded on YouTube for 60 minutes?" Anybody? No. Bueller? No. Great. So break it up. Break it up into six or seven little chapters that are snackable content. Right? Break those out, and then put those on YouTube. It's much more easier for people to consume in that and, five to eight minute range. You know, one of the things about breaking things up, I think there's evergreen content that you can create out of something like this, yes. where you not only break it up into videos that you put on YouTube, but you break it up into blog posts, a series of blog posts that you focus on different parts of what we're talking about in this webinar, where we're talking about you know the the how the customer journey has changed. Then you talk about why video, and then you talk about tools, and then you talk about where to put them. And so we've got four different blog posts 
that you can then repurpose this and maybe even make ebooks out of them. And all of a sudden, you've got evergreen content out of things. So not just break them up, but repurpose them in different places. 100%. So, John, I'll tell you a secret here of how we create in house or how at in house we create videos and we create um, content, all of the content for all of our customers. So, the secret sauce is I can't spell. <laughs> at all. I'm an immigrant kid, all right? So spelling, not my forte. And the team probably on the other side of the office is just laughing because they always know when they get emails from me, it's all underlined red. But here's how we create content. So obviously, I love video. And the greatest thing is when I do videos, I don't have to learn how to spell. So what I actually do is I will shoot a two, two and a half minute video. Then that video gets transcribed then that transcription gets turned into a blog, and out of that transcription, we actually pull out little tweets. So it allows me, or anybody that we actually work with and help, uh, to create written content without actually having to hit the keyboard. And John, you made a really, really good point there, is repurposing content. And video is just another medium. But out of that medium, you can actually extract all of the other older stuff, <coughs> text, and <laughs> repurpose that and use that uh, as well. Peter, I think it's a great time for you to talk about what does in-house do, what do you do, and what might you be able to do for this audience going forward if they want to you know, take the next steps, what resources do you have, and if they're looking for an expert to come in and help them do their first few things, what can in-house and what can Peter do for this audience today? You're awesome, John, but I hate talking about us because I'm all about sharing value on it, so I'll keep it super, super uh, short. So um, let me tell you really quick what we do. Well, one, we help people create videos about 80% faster and less expensive than traditional video production. So we've been talking about smartphones, uh, everything, and we actually do. We help customers uh, script and learn how to shoot and remote direct and use these beautiful devices to create two, two and a half minute thought leadership videos of people talking and sharing content for your uh, business. And what we do, we end up doing it for about 1500 bucks, the entire service, the entire video, we polish it, we produce it, we even transcribe it for you. So it's something that we believed in. We said, look, video doesn't have to be hard. We want to work with customers to empower them. Customers need more than one video on a regular basis, so let's help them do that. Um, I've also put a kind of an offer in here for you guys too. Um, we work on, if somebody signs up for us and does three videos over like a three month period, because we work with customers, you know, the first one's a little bit harder, but we want to get you through it and empower you, because it's going to help you. If you guys sign up for three months with us, we're actually going to give you and professionally transcribe and write and turn all those three videos into professional blogs. So this is just another way that we're trying to help customers go, look, yes, you get video, but what we talked about uh, is doing that. So I put that offer in there, I'll have that in the deck, and as well, there's a link in there, this resource section that's gonna be in there, and I can show you, but you're just gonna be looking at a link, so I'll email that to everyone. Um, but the best thing I would encourage is get that resource library, put all those, uh, our best stuff uh, up there, and by all means, um, if you want any help with videos, we're, we're be more than happy to jump on a call with you and to help you out. And you know what? It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, and it is the unfair advantage. There's my pitch. Peter, that was fantastic. Thank you. Have I told you how good you are on video? You should have your own show on one of those <laughs> evil channels. Um, you know, we, we should... We should do one together. We got to do a couple. We got to get to do a couple of shows. I love your energy too. We'll, I'd love yeah. that. Okay. Transcribing videos. What tool yes. do you use? Um, uh, it's called uh, SpeechPad. Okay. Make sure that's in the deck. Uh, editing software. That's a pretty common question throughout this thread. Yes. Uh, what 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 tools do you use? Um, anything you can get your hands on. <laughs> so from, okay, you can literally use iMovie on your phone just to yeah. cut out the bad parts, right? I and used it, that last night, it was simple, wow. super simple. 100% yeah. works, right? Uh, you can go to the, the, the more complicated ones, uh, you know, Adobe Premiere, by all means, it's the professional one in there. Um, there's I a- Final Cut. Final Cut, there you go, that's another one. I, but here's I a also super, use Camtasia. Camtasia, that's another one. For, screen, and, for screens. Yeah, and have you heard of Wii Video? 
So We Video is a super cool tool. It's an actually online uh, editing tool, and uh, it's primarily dominated by kids. Um, but We Video, and I'll uh, if you want to pop up the link in there, it's an online video editor. Um, it's super easy because it's got um, uh, templates. It's got everything. It is all cloud-based, so it's super user-friendly. So at the end of the day, anything you know. Here's the thing. Don't overthink editing, chop off the bad parts, <laughs> and get it up there and see the response, right? Just get to your first one. A lot of people um, get stuck on, hey, what do we need to edit, or what should we do in post-production, or should we have animations, and then guess what? The video just never gets out there. And I always have a, a thing that we say internally here, a video stuck in post-production or stuck in, um, in final approval is not generating any leads, right? And your number one reason for most of you who wanted videos is to generate leads. In order for this to generate some awareness, it's got to be out on the internet. So get it out there. You know, there's literally millions of digital fish swimming around you and your business right this second. And all you need to do is drop the digital lures into the water and ideally, those lures are about inspiring and educating them about how you might help them become better, smarter, faster. And if you do that, you will become your prospects and customers, and ideally their influencers as well, trusted advisor. And if you can do that, you can build a gold mine. I know I did. You totally <laughs> did. I love it, love it. And that's all I always look at when I go down to Microsoft. It's like, hi, I am your video guy. Right, that's it. Right, and and I like that. I like that. Like, I am your video I, guy. The video I am, guy. I am Microsoft's video guy. My first business a long time ago was Pete the computer guy. Well, today and for the last decade, I've been Pete the video guy. <laughs> yeah. So, I, what what I want to make sure that we got across here today is video is not hard. It's fun. It's easy, and you should be doing it right now. And, and the best way to do that is to start doing it with your friends because your friends are going to give you real feedback and they'll also be um, compassionate about it. And so what I do is when I walk down the street on my walks here in Santa Monica, I'll bring my phone and I'll have my headset in and I'll just do a quick Snapchat or Instagram video or Facebook Live video that I share with my friends. And you get used to just doing that thing, opening up the phone and talking into the camera. And that simple thing, that doing that, will break the ice and help you to begin doing that at scale with other business people. What do you think about that, Peter? 100%. You know what, John? You, you just mentioned a good point. you got to start. right? Yeah. And if you, if you start doing a video sharing it on your old social platform, at least you're starting. Mm -hmm. um, and listen, if you also get stuck with video and you want to ask for some help, just find anybody who's about 12 years and younger. <laughs> no offense to anybody in the corporate world, but I look at my kids and I'm going, you know, my kid sits there, she's popping it up, she's watching a YouTube channel and she has her own cooking channel. I'm like, why can't the corporate people, what's wrong with it? So again, don't overthink it, you know, it's share the stories and listen, there's no bad content, right? You're not going to produce anything that's bad and you have beautiful and tons of valuable content stuck in this little brain of yours and, and so that goal is to get it out there and guess what? Video, at least from my perspective, is a lot easier than writing a blog. So, so somebody asked how they do Facebook Live on their phone and it's just this little button right here that says live yep. and if I push that button live then Facebook uh, asked for access to my phone and it asked me to describe the video. Uh, let's try to get the light right on that, sorry. Uh, yeah. And then what happens is you type in what the video is about and you go live. It's that simple. And so what I like to do is if I'm in an amazing place, like I'm along the coast and the sun's setting or I see some whales out in the water or whatever, I share it with people. And you may not think that sharing your passion, plan, and purpose in life outside of your business stuff, and I call it the five F's, friends, family, food, fun, and frolicking. If you share those kind of things on a regular basis with other people, you're going to connect with them in a deeper way. You're going to build intimacy and trust, and you're going to be able to, when you do reach out on a business purpose, 
they're going to like you. They're going to know you, and that's how you stay connected with other people. So use video to do that, and when you're doing a prezzo, when you're doing a go-to-meeting, turn your friggin' camera on, okay? Because people Thank you. connect with people's eyes, their yeah. face, and you could read the other person so much more if you both have your cameras on and and you're going to build a deeper connection. So we're not just talking about video for putting content on your website. We're talking about video from here on, right? We're a we're a video world, and so get used to it. And don't be like those actors that when we went from talkies to fit to cameras and live action, they they lost it, right? Because they couldn't do it, right? And the best way to do it is just get out there and start walking. Yeah talking and videoing and you know what don't worry I didn't put makeup on today either so it's okay <laughs> do they have any of that wrinkle? you got any of that wrinkle cream there you probably don't even use that stuff I don't even use it but I, I'll tell you what man I yeah. start looking at my face and I just say to myself you know what I ain't that little baby anymore but it's all yeah. right you know yeah because but you know what everybody can actually tell when you go to iStock Photo and you get the great picture and you put it on your website of that actor going, hi, yeah, I do work at the company. Yes, I do. Yeah. Right? Be real. Be yourself. Absolutely turn on the video and you will see fantastic results. So there's a lot of questions that keep coming in. I love that you guys are engaged. It sounds like this has been a really powerful opportunity to inspire and educate uh, people about video and how to use it in your business. But it's not just about the business side, it's about the personal side too, because your personal brand plus your professional network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth, and you should be building your brand on a daily basis and use video for yourself and empower your team members to use videos because I think a company brand is built on the brands of the respective team members at a company. And on that note, Peter, I'm going to give you the last word. I want to thank, thank you, say. Thank you so much for having me. Love the pressure. And remember, the last word, video is the unfair advantage. Awesome. Good night, Irene. <laughs> Later. Later. Thank you for attending our webinar. Bye-bye. Yeah.